Welcome back folks, my name is Last Snow Meal and today I'm gonna give you a full solo guide to V Rising. We're gonna go through every single bit of info and everything that you need to know to actually be good at this game. We're gonna go from building stuff to fighting stuff to how you organize your castle and everything else. So without further wasting your time, let's get into the video. First thing we're going to cover is actually how to join a server and which types of servers you have in the game. So when you click play you also have online play, private game and the host dedicated server. So basically online play means you're going to be playing with different people in PvE or PvP environment. You can host your own private game where you can actually select everything that your world is going to have. So basically like uh, what... Uh, type of resources you're gonna be able to scavenge, how much of those resources are gonna be coming in, so each part of information can be like uh, inputted here to really make the game as you want to make it. Obviously private game is going to be only with yourself and with people you obviously invite into the world itself. Now in the online play we have PvE, PvP, full loot PvP and duo PvP, so what does this mean? First off, well, PvE obviously means that no one can raid your castle and also no one can attack you like uh, when you're roaming around, so this is only going to be against AI opponents. In the PvP scenario, uh, actually, you have different types of uh, servers, so that means that in this PvP scenario, when you die, you lose all of your resources, but you don't lose your equipment. And on the full loot PvP server, basically every single equipment you have, you can have the best equipment in the game, if you die and you don't claim it, someone else can actually steal everything that you have. And also, basically, you have raiding here, which does mean that someone can create dynamite and raid your base and obviously take everything you have. Now, servers will have different uh, rules. So that means, like, for example, some servers are going to have raiding enabled 24 hours, while some servers will basically have raid windows. And during those raid windows, you can attack someone and then when that is off, you basically cannot attack someone's castle, and you even have servers which uh, disable PvP during some times. I do recommend duo PvP if you are alone and want to go into this PvP scenario, but if you want uh, PvE, then you can join here alone. I wouldn't recommend this full PvP or this one because it says 3-4 to four players recommended, and if you're alone, you're gonna have a harder time fighting different people because usually they're going to be in groups of three to four people, which you cannot really fight. So once you, for example, click PvE server, you can actually have a bunch of uh, servers here you can select, but we're going to click here, display all servers and settings, and in the game mode, you can actually see everything PvE, PvP, latency, clan size, and everything else that you're gonna be able to join. You have activity here, for example, medium crowded. If you're in PvE, it doesn't matter all that much, but there are going to be like uh, castles on every corner. So what I do recommend is finding a low population server or the one which doesn't have huge activity so you can actually get your bearing as you join. Also keep in mind that um, the character you create is going to be tied to that server. So every single server you join, you have to create a new character and then basically start from the beginning every time. Now we're going to talk about your character. First off, if we press tab, you're going to see equipment and crafting. So for example, here we see gear level 53. So every single item you have equipped is going to increase your item level. For example, if I lose this weapon, my gear score is going to fall down. So always uh, keep a weapon up if you're fighting enemies, obviously, because this will determine your power level as well. So here you have your equipment. Basically down here you have uh, just your inventory where you can loot everything you have in the game. And on the crafting uh, tab side, this is like the first type of items you're going to craft in the game. Like for example, bone, you're gonna need to craft the sword or uh, these like uh, armor pieces, you need bone as well. Also, Vermin Salve is something you're gonna need at the beginning because this is going to replenish your HP. So, you, for example, here you need a rat, plant fiber, and bone. And then everything else here you're going to unlock, obviously, as you progress through the game. But this is like the first items you build. And everything else, we're gonna be going through different uh, machines to build different stuff. Here we see your HP. And here we have your blood pool. Now, blood pool means uh, blood in your body. So if this thing depletes, you don't have any more blood in your body and you're going to die. You consume the blood from different enemies, for example, throughout the map. So when you fight him and then when you lower his HP, you're going to see a percentage. 
Every single mob has a different percentage, which means the higher the percentage, the better quality of blood. And the higher percentage you actually like uh, consume, it will open up different uh, bonuses for, uh, for you. So if you have a 100% uh, creature which you basically feed on you're going to get all of these uh, buffs for your character and basically once that depletes you have to find someone else you're gonna be going through this multiple times when you press control you have different abilities for your character obviously you're going to unlock some of these things as you progress through the game like for example here we have the wolf form that we get from fighting enemies and I'm gonna talk about that in a second but one of the most important things is Blood Mend. So this means that um, you have two types of HP here. The first one is this uh, uh, blue bar which is going to deplete and then after that your HP is going to shrink. And the only way to replenish that is to click Blood Mend and your character is going to start healing. This will start depleting your blood pool but your HP is going to rise. So always use this and obviously once your blood pool is down feel free to basically engage any monster which is alive and to feed off of him to fully replenish this. Now when it comes to the progression in the game, when you press O, you're going to see the blood. And this is the different blood powerful enemies you slay throughout the game. So for example, one of the first bosses or mini bosses you're going to fight is Alpha Wolf and he's basically level 16. When you defeat this Alpha Wolf, you're going to get a wolf form power which I actually used here. So basically every single new enemy you fight and defeat is going to unlock something new. Besides abilities, like for example the which one I use, you're also going to unlock different abilities for your character. As you can see down here, I can use up to three abilities, two normal ones and one ulti as you get when you fight these uh, bosses. So also, they uh, unlock recipes which are going to be extremely important to progress throughout the game because you, for example, need leather to craft a lot of stuff later on. So if you skip uh, Keely the Frost Archer, you're going to obviously miss out on leather and you're not going to be able to progress in that way. You also get structures and those different structures are going to be obviously for refining those materials. So you're going to be getting a leather through tannery itself. Uh, for example, this one unlocks uh, woodworking bench, it's gonna give you a blood rage ability and then all of these other recipes that you can use or for example this one, big stash, you can store your items and give you a different power. When it comes to powers, you press J and here you have different ability selections. Obviously this is going to be different trees. So for example, you have unholy which uh, I unlocked by defeating multiple uh, bosses like for example pestilence corpse explosion purgatory you have illusion here like the spectral wolf chaos abilities frost abilities and so on so as you kill those bosses you unlock these things so basically if you want to use it you can just drag and drop or just click and it's going to be the abilities you use in game like for example this one right here Next up, let's look at the map itself. So here we have a few zones that the game actually has. The first one and the starting one is going to be the Farbane Woods. I highly recommend building a castle somewhere here at the beginning because a lot of bosses and a lot of things you're going to be doing at the beginning is going to be tied to this area over here. So either like go where I am right now or maybe a little bit to the right, maybe uh, closer to the actual Dunley Farmlands. But Basically, each one of these biomes, like Hallowed Mountains, Dunley Farmlands, Silverlight Hills, Cursed Forest, all of these are going to have different level enemies. So, if you're not ready, do not go into these farmlands just yet. So, as you unlock new things, you will slowly require uh, some of the resources which this area doesn't have. So, you'll have to move, for example, into Dunley Farmlands to farm those materials. And if we go and see like these zones, these are PvE zones, these are the camps where basically those monsters are going to respawn. So if you need something, like for example you need whetstone, you can just hover over it and you're going to see important loot, whetstone, sulfur ore and paper. So these are the things you can mostly get from this area. If we go here you can get iron ore, if we go here you can get copper ore for example. So if you need something, scroll over here and look at what uh, types of items they have and basically go from there. When it comes to weapons, you have to worry about a few things. First off, gear level is the most important one. When you're thinking like, which weapon am I going to use, only use one with the highest gear level. Like For example, I have the General Soul Reaper, which um, gives me a lot of physical power, 
physical damage to undead spell power, spell critical uh, strike chance and all of that which is very useful for me. So here on the left we see primal attack which is going to be your left click and you see these abilities. These abilities are burned into every single weapon so for example if I use this weapon you're going to have like different abilities like for example this one. If I switch my weapon like for example this one i'm going to get different abilities burned into it now for example why do i have two weapons each one of these different types of weapons are gonna give you like different uh, buffs for certain things like for example this does 25 percent physical damage to minerals this does 25 physical damage to undead so like each one of these is going to contribute to something new you don't really have to have it at the beginning so have one weapon and use that for everything uh, that you collect resources and fight enemies for. So you don't really need these two weapons, only if you have extra materials. Now when it comes to scavenging and looting stuff, at the beginning obviously you can see like some of these trees and rocks here. So just basically use your weapon on everything you do and it's going to collect like for example plant fiber, lumber and then for example if we go here you're gonna be able to collect like stone this is it here we have some copper you can obviously do like these things respawn so i wouldn't worry about it too much but this is basically how you go out and you loot for stuff when you actually go to like some of these areas like these aoe uh sorry uh, pve areas you'll have multiple uh, enemies which are going to drop new stuff so for example if we destroy all of these guys we're going to see these crates over here always destroy these because you have potential chance to get something new and in these areas you're going to see different types of chests a normal chest and a golden chest which is going to obviously give you new stuff as you progress throughout the game and it's going to be one of your main uh, looting areas overall now let's talk about the day and night cycle so because you're a vampire obviously during the day you cannot be out in the sun because you're going to die there is a, a certain buffer every time you go out in the sun where you can actually go and quickly go into a shadow before you start taking damage. Keep in mind, the damage you take when you are actually exposed to the sun is huge and you're going to be dead in a few seconds when you're exposed. So, for example, we have the day right here and you see like I'm using this shadow over here to hide myself. If I go here, my character is going to start taking damage. Like, for example, we can see right here. There we go. And it, it actually does huge damage if you're out. So basically, if you're out during the day, I would just be using shadows to move around. So just uh, use these trees, use everything you can. Even the smallest shadow like this one can protect you when you're going out. And I wouldn't worry too much about the day. I would just be more careful how you fight and engage enemies. Because especially if you're engaging uh, stronger enemies, bosses, I always recommend doing it during the night. Because you're simply going to be able to move around and you don't have to worry worry about accidentally going out in the sun to die. During the nights uh, things are easier so you don't have to worry about that and obviously in this game nights are longer which does make sense. Sometimes you're going to see like a full moon during the night which uh, basically gives you uh, more abilities, more damage, more strength and everything. So if you see this blood red full moon uh, this whole thing up here is going to be red and I recommend going out and fighting like stronger bosses then because you're going to have this small buff. So as you're fighting enemies you can kite them into the shadows and basically attack them there and you're going to be fine. Now let's talk about castle building. So your castle is going to be your HQ in this game. Everything you do is going to go through your castle. Especially if you're on a PvP server uh, obviously you have to pay attention how you build your castle because enemies can actually go and destroy your walls and loot everything you have so it's always good as you would for example doing rust especially people who have played rust they know that you have to wall off certain areas so that uh, someone has a harder time to breach into your main area like for example this one because this is a test for a pve server I, I don't have to worry about someone breaking in so i don't have to build defensively too much so here we have your castle heart this is your main area so this is what powers your castle overall so if you go f on it here we see castle power and you're going to be putting in these uh blood essences so that your uh, castle can be uh, powered and fortified so for example here we see that in seven days and 18 hours if i don't put any blood essence this uh, castle is going to decay and ultimately disappear because you don't want people placing a castle and then 
going offline forever. If they do and they don't return, your castle is uh, their castle is going to be destroyed so someone else can move in. So always keep in mind to have this powered so everything in your castle is going to work. So for example, Blood Essence right click and we have increased the actual time limit. So if we take it out, we see six days, seven days. This is the most important one. So when you press B and you basically place your castle heart, here you're going to see the surrounding area. In the fundamentals tab, you're going to see borders. This is how you claim different stuff. You click on the border and obviously you're going to have a limit depending on the actual uh, castle level. I'm currently at level three, so I can build up to 150 of these zones. So what I recommend doing is when you create this, always claim the territory around your castle heart because by doing this you're going to create a certain square which you can actually expand upon as you're going around now for example if i go on my map you're going to see a bunch of castles around me so what i always recommend doing is finding a place which doesn't have a lot of castles nearby and always always see if you can build close to these uh, for example hills these stones over here or for example um, these roads because that means no one else can claim this territory over here because uh, this territory is unable to, to be claimed by anyone. That's one of the most important things you have to remember. So, as I said, claim the territory around your castle and try to claim as much territory as possible with this one because no one is going to be able to build around that area and you're going to have enough time to place your walls and place everything else which you would need. Um, to use later on. When it comes to securing your castle and basically getting a roof over your head, you have to worry about a few things. First off, if we look at the fundamentals, you have the palisades. These palisades are going to be the first uh, walls you build around your castle, and this thing is actually going to uh, protect you relatively because uh, people can raid you again, but um, they're gonna have a harder time going through this because they, they need a good amount of explosives to go through this. So when you place this around your castle, keep in mind later on, if you go here, we're going to see walls. So this is going to be your castle walls. You're not gonna be getting a roof with palisades. What you need to do is actually have reinforced walls everywhere and the matching floor which is going to give you that roof over your head. So basically, just use this uh, on your palisades and it's going to upgrade and it's going to give you proper uh, protection. Keep in mind, you can also build with this straight away so you don't have to post the palisade and then use this reinforced wall. You can just go reinforced wall straight away. So let me give you a perfect example of what I mean. Here you basically have an area which I have walled off and this is going to be my new area. We're going to be, uh, you know, placing stuff. But as you can see right now, this thing does not have a roof over it. So what you need to do is we have to start building floors and this is going to give us that wall. So we have to go and basically floor everything here. Keep in mind, you can change the design of these floors. You don't have to worry about that. If you have one room, you can use different flooring and it's going to create your roof. So you don't have to worry about that. So this huge area is going to be walled off. And there we go. You can see as I uh, planted every single flooring here, this is how I got a roof over my head. And this is basically what you can do when you unlock something uh, further on. So if we uh, exit outside here, obviously this area is not going to be, um, is not going to have a roof because it doesn't have a flooring yet, but we're going to solve that later on. Keep in mind, you have two types of doors here. Like for example, uh, if we go to the actual um, here, yeah. Here we have the Royal Gate or just any gate whatsoever. And you have the Servant Lock. When you have a servant lock, this means a servant cannot exit through these doors. This is extremely important. You don't want your servants opening and closing doors because that means someone can enter. So when it comes to the outside, uh, doors always have a servant lock on them. Next up, let's talk about production and refinement. So as you start going through these uh, quests over here, you're going to start unlocking different stuff for your production. So for example, here we have crafting. So this is what you need to craft stuff. And obviously you're not going to have all of this unlocked as you progress later on, you will unlock it. Refinement is one of the most important ones because one of the first things you're going to build is a sawmill, a furnace, and basically the simple workbench. So for example, if we go over here and we visit our uh, sawmill over here, we can see that uh, by putting in lumber, we can create planks and uh, sawdust. 
I don't recommend throwing anything away, like for example, planks are going to be some of the most important uh, things you're going to have in this game because planks are going to be used for building walls, building different uh, objects in, in the castle itself and so on. on. And also keep a sawdust in your chest because we're going to be using this later on for different stuff. But here we have tannery for example, so this is where you put your animal hides and you get leather. Here we have the furnace, so for example here we can uh, just have different stuff for you to unlock overall. Like first one is obviously going to be copper ore, which is 20 of these is going to smelt into one copper ingot, which you can use later on in the game to build various stuff. Now, how do you unlock all of these things? Well, first off, as you're fighting enemies, you're going to unlock different recipes. Those recipes are going to be giving you different stuff throughout the game. So, for example, first thing you're going to build is the research desk. In this research desk, you, for example, have these uh, tomes, which unlock some of this technology. So, for example, someone dropped me uh, this Merciless Night Stalker West uh, leggings, gloves and boots recipes, which I just bring here and research. Also... If you collect 50 paper, you can discover a random technology. This can be anything. You can get something good, you can get something bad. But if you have 50 paper, click here, discover, and basically you can claim it all. If you find a, let's say, a tome, which you have already used, what you can do is go over here into your devourer, which is also another, another thing you're going to build. And this is phenomenal because this is going to uh, take the book and give you like uh, 15 or 10 uh, paper and then later on is going to be giving you different stuff so if you have multiple books you don't use bring them here you're going to get paper and then you can use that paper to unlock something else which is going to be random later on you're going to unlock study and the process is going to be the same so the second area is going to be giving you scrolls instead of uh, paper and then obviously you're going to use these scrolls same principle to unlock different stuff for your character from structures to armor, weapons, and magic, which you can craft later on. Next up, let's talk about servants. So as you progress through the game, you're gonna get an ability to have some of these uh, servants. Uh, every single uh, upgrade of your castle is gonna be giving you an ability to have more servants. And I recommend using these and actually getting these because these are some of the most important things in the game. So servants uh, are basically used to protect your castle and, for example, you can send them out on a mission. How do you claim a servant? Well, first off, you have to get an ability to do that. But if we go here and we use the dominating presence, for example, we can use this kiss of a vampire to get someone under our control. So what I recommend doing is when you're fighting multiple enemies and you see like a mob which has like really good blood and you think this character is strong, kill every other enemy and leave him alone and then use the kiss of the vampire to basically attack him. Let me show you what I mean by that. So for example, we see two enemies here. I'm going to take out this one over here and then I'm going to use the kiss of the vampire to get him under my control. This is going to take a while depending on what happens and then obviously you're going to be able to guide this person to your tombstone and then use um, a button to basically have him under your control and that's about it so we're going to remove this guy from our uh, control and that's about it so as i said you use those servants to send them out on the missions so if we go sit over on our royal throne we can select some of these parts and basically send someone on the mission now keep in mind i have a lot of people already on a mission like for example this one uh, it doesn't tell me but okay so I sent two uh, servants here to basically collect some of the iron ore, to collect some of the general uh, area loot and everything, so they will bring this back to my home. You have to equip each one of these uh, servants with uh, different weapons and armor which you would use to basically increase their power. So if we go here, servant inventory, we can see that I equipped uh, this uh, thug with different uh bonuses like different uh, armor pieces which unlock him gear level and power which obviously you have to do if you want to send out your servants uh, to somewhere else so for example this one uh, came back from its uh well adventures and he brought me all of this stuff which i can use later on for uh, to basically refine and use for my own crafting next thing let's talk about your garden so garden is going to be one of the most important things later on for example like here i have a garden every time you loot something you 
destroy a crate, there is a chance you're going to get a seed of various things. So what I recommend doing is basically taking some of these seeds and, you know, placing them here so you can, you know, use them later on. So we can dismantle this, it's not going to be a problem. Here we have a snow flower seed and you just basically place it over here and it's going to grow and it's going to give you an ability to loot all of this. Like for example, same with um, getting seeds for trees. If I cut this, this will actually regrow, same as this, so we can have infinite amount of resources when you just have this garden. So I definitely recommend having this as soon as possible and um, just having it tidy in like nice little spot where you can just come and take what you need. When it comes to some of the bonus things, you can freely go and move these things around. For example, holding left click, it's going to move everything around. You can also do that with, um, with different chests, like even if the chest is full, you can just move it around place it anywhere you want and nothing is going to disappear so basically uh you know reorganizing the castle is not tedious because you don't really lose any resources whatsoever if you just move things around here you also have the compulsively count button which is one of the coolest buttons they basically have so for example uh, if you separate these things like if we take a clay uh and then we take this for example like quartz when we click this compulsively count it's going to take the items from your inventory which are already in this chest and it's going to sort them so you don't have to manually sort through everything yourself so we can also place this so this is a very cool button which i definitely recommend you use so when you come back with full inventory just go click you know different chest click different chest click and it's going to separate everything where it should be overall when it comes to horses and getting an actual horse in this game, you have to go here to Dunley Farmland. So here, for example, we can see important loot horse. Or if we go here, we can see like, for example, uh, important loot horse. So some of these areas are actually going to have a horse which you can pick up. And you basically hold F to get onto the horse. I'm going to show you that in a second. So here, if we hold to mount, we can actually use this horse. If we go tab, you can provide water-filled canteens to the horse to basically increase um, the, the, the amount of time the horse is going to be alive. If you don't provide them this, after some time the horse is going to die. But you can always go up uh, basically here to Dunley Farms, get the horse and bring it back to your home uh, base. And it's going to be okay for as long as you provide water. So keep that in mind, always keep it obviously behind closed doors. And you can use this horse to travel around the map a lot faster than you would actually do it in the wolf form itself. When it comes to fighting different enemies, uh, obviously these encounters are tough because uh, some of the enemies you, that you face are going to be extremely challenging. If you see a skull, that means do not attack. I mean, I don't have to tell you that twice. So one of the most important things you have to pay attention to this game is pacing. So I'm obviously going to use this and if I get attacked, I'm going to be incapacitated. So this is going to tell you like uh, how those enemies are going to use different abilities to take you out. As you can see, my health is going down relatively fast. And if you basically let them attack you, you're going to lose that HP. But if you actually use your surrounding against these enemies, like for example, here you can hide behind, you can use this to your advantage and he's not going to hit you. And this is how you take them out. Every single enemy here, you can kite them for some time and sometimes they're not going to regain their health back. So you can play around on that, but always keep a space out, use a spell and always see how you can defeat enemies without them getting too close to you. Because if you are surrounded, you're pretty much going to die, especially if you are on lower levels. So always keep space and be careful how you attack them. So you can, you have a web here they can use on you and which means you're not gonna be able to move. So yeah, be careful how you fight them. Always kite them around these areas and see if you can use these things to basically stop them from attacking you. But that's uh, pretty much that, uh, yeah, you can pay attention to. But just be careful, keep your distance and don't engage multiple enemies which you know you cannot fight. And this is pretty much everything I have for the beginner's guide to V Rising. I covered pretty much everything that you need to know for the beginning of this game. So most importantly is to create your base, wall it off. Obviously if you're in PvE you can just wall it off, you don't have to worry about someone entering. But if you're in a PvP scenario I always recommend building different walls which are going to separate your castle heart, your chest behind double walls. So that if someone actually breaks through one of your walls, they have to use more resources to go through your third 
or fourth or second wall, which is obviously going to deter a lot of attackers from attacking you because, yeah, they're gonna use more resources than they can potentially get from raiding someone. And that's it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to tell me down below what do you think about this. And also don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button for more. As I said, chapters, you can go through each one and see which one fits you the best. Be careful, take it easy. And if you're into these sort of games, I'm sure you're going to love it. And if you have any extra questions, feel free to tell me down below. This is LKM signing out. Stay classy, everyone. And I'll talk to you next time. And also huge thanks to my current Patreon supporters. Bye-bye.